Okay, so how do we know that Jehovah and Jesus Christ is God? How do we know? Well, because he told us. That's how I know. And um, this one man tried to say, oh, that was your subconscious mind. So I looked up the subconscious mind. And there were times when he came and I was awake. And then it wasn't my imagination. Also, I looked up the conscious mind and I was aware of what was going on. I was painfully aware of what was going on. So I'm like, well, if I know and he told me that they know too and he did announce himself as Jehovah and Jesus and that his Holy Spirit was in our midst then why would he lie and he wouldn't because he didn't lie about anything else that had happened he testified that he had witnessed everything that had been done to me and to us and he even spoke against them for lying and they were lying on me and on him and then he told me that they knew who he was and they told me that they knew who he was and that they just denounced him and that they were also lying about the parts of him that he has revealed to us. That they wanted to hide that and they just did not want to accept him for who he was. Um, and that, um, that Satan, that the ones that they were serving, that they knew um, that he didn't like God. And that they didn't like God, the real God. And they chose to denounce him and follow behind the ones that didn't like God. And um, they're persecuting people that actually do know him and that are telling the truth about him. Because they don't like him. And so, um... That's trying to force us, and they even tried to force us to um, talk bad about God and to lie on him and say he wasn't who he was. But God was uh, my friend, and he was providing for me, and he was being everything that he said he was, that he would be. So why would I turn on him for a group of enemies, people that didn't even like me or treat me right anyway. And the Lord was the one who helped me against all them. And then they turn around and try to force me to um, denounce him and lie on him and say that he was something, something else. Um, so all these people going around uh, talking about these gods and these false gods and everything, they are lying. They know who he is. Uh, and Satan is behind all those false religions. And that's why you got to go to Revelations. The Beast of Revelations is where they have all... Um, the beast is full of the false names of the false gods that they have been allowed to make up and say that they're worshiping this... Uh, a new god or a different god besides the real one. And God said that the beast was full of blasphemous names and that the beast sat on many waters and that the waters were the people. Um, and the nations, and the tongues, and the multitudes, and so all these people who all over the earth who are saying, oh, we believe in this religion, and we believe in this God, um, they know that that is that beast that they are serving, 
And God said he would cast the beast, that serpent, that old devil, into the lake. And the, the, the society, these societies that we have built, which uh, run off of this capitalism, off of this money, uh, this mammon, um, has turned into the real God of these people. And Satan is behind all of that. But mostly the real God of these people is like the money. And I understand what the Bible says. You can't serve God and mammon. You got to choose your master. And the society has taught people that it's okay to denounce the one true living God. And make up all of these false names just because you have to use money for everything. And you got to keep going after money for everything. And I understand we need money. But now they're lying. They're just lying. Um, because the piece of revelations is full of the blasphemous name. And people talk about being persecuted for this and that, but when you have to lie and when you're not allowed to tell the truth about who God is, now you understand what the real massacres were all about. And they're trying to tell us that we can't use force when we're the ones who need to use the force at times. And they want to use force unnecessarily and they don't want anybody to say anything to them because that's how they continue to rule and they have the power is through all the tyranny. Because when you go against the things of God, all you can do is be a tyrant. And so, the times that I have had to use force, God was with me. And they don't want righteous people who are being attacked. That's how they try to keep power. That's all they know how to do is try to attack us and beat us down and persecute us. And when we use that force, like, boom, like, back up off me. Like, I know when we use that force, like, I'm not going to play with you. Leave alone when we use force they want to retaliate because they scared of that they don't want us using force because that's how they did all those things to us by using force but they used it unnecessarily so they don't want to hear the righteous stand up and say <laughs> I'm using force because I have a right to. And then they want to be the judge of who has the right to use force and who doesn't. And they're lying for the people who do not have the right to use force. And then they're lying on the people who did have the right to use force. Because that's how they keep that control over the innocent and the weak and the poor. And those who they want to oppress. That's what keeps them so powerful and rich. It's by using unnecessary force on those who they wish to subdue and oppress. And then trying to keep us defenseless and lying about our God and telling us that we can't use force to defend ourselves to stop attacks. Someone's calling me while I'm talking about this. That's how they, uh, that's how they keep us down and remain in power over us. So, God was fighting for me, the real God, not no fake God, so I know who he is now. Uh, and as far as the right to use force, 
The Bible says that God is governor of the nations, and he is. And he had already made the decision that he saw what took place between Austin and I and my child. And he saw that Austin was attacking me and the boy. And God knew that I was with child as well. And he made the decision based off of him being God and knowing everything. So we didn't have to come into a courtroom and present evidence to God um, because he had already seen the matter and he already knew the intentions of our hearts and minds and who was guilty of what. So the courts can try to erase whatever evidence they want and hide and lie and everything, but God had already made the decision that I was not guilty and that Austin was guilty of abusing women and children. And God made that decision and the courts and the people were mad um, because of the worship of the satanic religion of white people. Um, and based off of our society being built off of that racism and that satanic worship, um, they tried to get angry at God and his verdict and they tried to uh, overturn God's verdict but of course I'm not guilty and he said that he is governor of the nations he said he makes the decisions and he decides who is guilty and who is not guilty and that if he speaks it and it comes from his mouth then it's gonna do what he said and God said I was not guilty so they are trying to uh, basically go against him and go against his verdict by trying to retaliate against me and take the boy and threaten us. Um, but anyway, the only thing I just wanted to say was I know because he told me. So it really makes me think, oh, he also said I will bring you from up under the burdens of the Egyptians and when you see the pyramid or the dollar bill and you see them wear all these Egyptian clothing and all of this stuff and the rituals that they are doing yearly God already t let me tell my son Egypt say Egypt so I know I don't have to worry about how much money I make in this society or what I own because I know I never was really made uh, to succeed in this society, in this type of society. Um, but I have made some pretty good adjustments just to survive in it. But the burdens were very heavy um, the entire time um, in the Bible it says let Israel say they have afflicted me from my youth my childhood was heavily burdened with pain and suffering and oppression and abuse and burdens and it has been that way for as long as I can remember So, ain't no way I'm letting go of my God. He has judged the entire situation. He's been passing his judgment and everything that they say against me. He's been rising up in defense of, like my representation. Every time someone say something about this, God go well, because it is. And she did this because of that. And he just been defending me the whole time. So that's how I know he's gone. Because he 